Hey there, today I want to do a short video show you how I hook my uh, Westinghouse dual fuel generator up to my home to power everything all at once. Well here it is, this is where I keep it stored. That's the propane that goes with it. Pull it out here. The cover I got free when I bought the generator, if you leave a review on Amazon, you get this free cover with it. Get it out here in the driveway. I only run it on propane, it's dual fuel, but I don't wanna gum up the uh, carburetor. So I use propane with it only. So here I've got a blast gate that I can open aside of my garage and pass the wire through, or the extension cord I should say. And it's right here. Just pass it through this side. This way I can close the garage door when I'm using the generator. Let's see if I can do this one handed. Plug it into the 50 amp side. There we go. So it's plugged into the 50 amp outlet goes through the blast gate, comes through. This is 25 foot extension cord, by the way, I got on Amazon. And then my 50 amp inlet is right here. I installed that, got that on Amazon as well. And then it, uh, goes into the house on six gauge copper. That goes through there and you can't see it, but it goes down into the basement. I'll show you that in a minute here. But 50 amp inlet. And just twist it on. And a little lock ring you can tighten down. we go 25 foot extension cord connected to my 50 amp inlet and it goes out my garage through the blast gate I've got a security chain there too I can run through that blast gate and chain my uh, generator up outside when the garage door is shut that's what the chain is there but like I said it comes out the blast gate into the 50 amp outlet on my generator. So next we'll go inside and I'll show you uh, the circuit breaker box and the interlock kit I have installed. Okay and here we are in my utility room at the breaker box and you can see the black six gauge wire that comes from the garage comes down into the breaker box and it goes to this outlet right here, this 50, 50 amp breaker, not outlet breaker, 50 amp breaker. And then the interlock kit I got on Amazon and I installed that myself. Basically the little plate behind this front plate is kind of a template. I use that, I just laid it down. I removed the cover off the breaker box and then laid it on the workbench and then just marked with Sharpie uh, the holes and drilled it out myself and installed the interlock. It was really easy. So the interlock, obviously you already know this, but when the breaker is turned, the main to the house is turned on, it won't let you slide that interlock up so you can't turn your generator on. It, bl it blocks the breaker, 50 amp breaker from turning on. And 
So if you want to use the generator, you have to turn the main off and that will allow this to slide up all the way, which will allow you to turn the breaker to the generator on. And what that does is it ensures that you're not using the generator while the main breaker's on so you don't backfeed into the neighborhood uh, system and potentially injure our linesmen. So you have to turn the main off before it'll physically let you turn the, the breaker on to the generator inlet in the garage. So this was on Amazon. I think it was like $25. It wasn't, wasn't expensive. It was really easy to install. It comes with these stickers, these warning stickers that you can add. It is totally code. It was cheap and it was, it was um, really easy to install. And as a side note, when I bought this house, they just had the breakers scribbled here in, in handwritten print and I could not read which breakers went to what. So I started over. On Amazon, you can get this large sticker that you can put on your, your breaker box uh, door with these numbers and you can kind of clean up your labeling system for your uh, breaker box. And that's what I did. I don't know if you can read the text but it's all numbered. And then I, I put the little number stickers next to each breaker. Just makes it much more organized so I know what's going on. So the way this works is during a power outage, of course the power will be out and you come down to the breaker box here, turn off all the breakers to every outlet, every um, device in your house, every uh, appliance turn these all off first. Then I turn the main off, slide the interlock up, and then turn the generator inlet on. Turn that breaker on. And then I go out in the garage and I start the generator, let it warm up a minute, and then I turn the breaker uh, that's on the generator that energizes the 50 amp outlet on the generator. To, to energize the panel. So then I come back down to the basement and I select, selectively turn on the breakers that I want turned on during generator power. Now my generator will power everything. I have a gas dryer, a gas hot water heater, a gas kitchen stove. So I don't have a lot of high demand electric um, appliances. So basically I can do everything during a power outage. But obviously, if you have an electric stove or an electric dryer, you would want to leave those breakers off and turn the rest of the breakers on one by one. And what that does one by one is it gently puts the load on your generator. Instead of having all your breakers on and you just flip the switch, it, it just can surge and it's not great for your generator. So best to turn all these off energize your home with the generator by turning on the 50 amp outlet or uh, breaker I mean and then one by one turn on each circuit to your home selectively and just probably you might want to leave your uh, electric dryer off your electric stove electric water heater um, I don't think that generator would would do those type of appliances um, but that gently puts the load on the generator too which is better for it so yeah, that's it, all cleaned up. It's pretty neat, organized, and it works really good. Um, I did run a test and like I said, it runs everything in my house and my two ton air conditioner. So I've been really happy with it. So when the power comes back on, you just do everything in reverse. You go through and turn off each circuit individually, then turn off the 50 amp outlet or breaker to your generator turn that off and then you can turn your main on and then turn on all your individual breakers back on to to be powered off of the street power again and then you come back out here and the first thing i do is i unplug the generator the extension cord to the generator while the generator is running and I let the generator cool down and then I shut the generator off. But then obviously the last step for me as I come and remove the 50 amp extension cord from the 
from the inlet, close that up, and then put the extension cord away. And then I pull the chain, if I'm using it, the extension cord through, and then close the last gate up. And that's it. Just a, a quick rundown how I power my whole house with my Westinghouse WGen 9500 DF generator. Well, I hope that video was helpful. I've got two separate videos that I did an actual review of the generator itself, which is down below in the description. I'll, I'll link to it for you. And then also another video how I unbonded the neutral in the actual generator to work with my home wiring. Um, if you power a whole house with a generator, you don't want your generator to have a bonded neutral if your home's system is a bonded neutral system. So I explained that a little bit in the video, but two separate videos um, on the generator itself and how I unbonded the neutral in the actual generator. You'll find both those videos down in the description down below. But I'm hoping this video was a help to you. If it has, give it a like and subscribe. Get uh, notified of future videos and we would appreciate it. If you have any comments to share or to add, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.